Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be talking about creating pricing lists using the pricing list widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. So, a pricing list widget is something you'd use to create your restaurant menu, your coffee shop price list, or maybe your salon offer, things like that. Everything you see on this page are examples of what you can do using the pricing list widget from the key add-ons for Elementor. And in this video, I'll show you how to make your own pricing lists with this widget. After this video, you'll be able to make all the variations we see on the landing page, or create something entirely customized. The key add-ons for Elementor plugin comes with massive stylization possibilities, which include adding images to your pricing lists, changing fonts, colors, and more. So, let's go ahead and see how you can create your own pricing lists with ease. Here we are on the page, ready to get started. I'll be showing you how to create a pricing list by making a three-column menu. To start, I'll need to find my widget, so type in pricing list. Then drag it over to the page. This is what the default pricing list template looks like. Everything you see here can be customized, and all the customization options are located in this panel to the left. First, we'll add our own content using these options in the Content tab, and then we'll customize the design of the widget in the Style tab. The Advanced tab has several useful options for responsiveness positioning, entrance animations, and much more, but since it's available for all Elementor widgets and not unique to our pricing widget, we won't be covering it in this tutorial. Now, before we take a look at the Layout option, we can see there are two choices. Standard and Image Before. We'll go through the widget options using the standard layout, but I'll also show you how a pricing list with the Image Before layout looks like later on in this video. By default, the pricing list will have three items. If you want, you can add more by clicking on this Add Item button. You'll immediately be able to see it on the right, and it will have the same placeholder content as all the other items. Now, let's get back to the first item and see what options we have here. For starters, there's the option to add an image after the item title. If you don't want to use an image, you can remove it by clicking here. Underneath that is where you change your item title. Simply type over the dummy text, like so. Then, if you like, you can change the title color either by adding a new hex code or by using the slider. There's also a way to change the color of all your list items simultaneously with the Style tab, and we'll be going through that later. For now, let's finish going through our item options. In the Description field, you can expand on what your item is, or what it contains. So for a food item like garlic bread, I'll type in the major ingredients of the dish. And once I've done that, I can add the price. Since this is basically a text field, you can enter the currency by hand, so it's easy to change if you're not in the US market. Following that, you can add a discount price just as easily. Type in the amount, and the old one will be crossed out to let visitors see how much they're saving. To help with that, you can also change the price color. Alternatively, you can change the price color of all items using the Style tab. Alright. I'm going to enter the content for the rest of my items while the video skips ahead. Ok, my menu is moving along, the list is customized, and now I've reached the button. The button settings are here. The button we see on the right is our default button, but using these options we can customize it. Under Layout we can make our button filled, that's actually what we already have. Or change the button to Outlined, which looks like this or make it textual so it's more subtle. I'll restore it to the default field. Then we can choose our button type. We can pick one of these three. Standard, the one we currently have, or with inner border, so we have a border within the button body. Or icon boxed, which looks its best when the button includes an icon. Since I'm happy with the original look, I'll restore this to standard. Then we have the option to enable an underline for the button text. So if we set yes, we get a line underneath our text. I'll return this to default, which is no underline. After that, we can pick the button size. Normal is the default one, then small gets us this. And large makes the button a bit bigger. 
And finally, normal full width gives us a button as wide as our column. OK, I'll return mine to norm. Below this is the field where we can change the button text. It's very simple, just type in what you want your new text to be. I'll change mine to entire menu. Right under this is the field where we add the link for our button. You should use the URL of your menu page, or your services page, or whatever else that works for your site. Since this is a demo, I'll just set a hashtag, which will create a link to the page we're currently on. Finally, we can decide whether our link will open in the same or a new window. Since it will be taking visitors to another part of the same site, you can keep this set to same window. In the next section, we can add an icon to our button. You can choose one by clicking here and then searching for the icon you want. I'll add an angle icon to show you. This one will look nice. Insert. Now that we have an icon, we can choose whether it will be positioned to the left or right of our button text. I'll change it to left. Our last set of options in the Content tab are Developer Tools. With them, you can choose to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode, which will let you easily copy it for use elsewhere on your site. Alright, now we can move on to stylizing our pricing list. So let's go to the Style tab. The changes we make here will apply to the entire widget, so we don't have to change the individual item's color or something like that. The first option we have here lets us pick the title tag for our item titles. You have the choice of everything from H1 to H6, and there's even the paragraph tag. The font used for each of these tags will be drawn from what is set in your theme, so you can get your pricing list to match the look of your site without having to do much work to get it that way. I'll leave this set to default. Following that, we can pick the color for all the item titles in the list. I'll change it now by typing in a new hex code. OK, there we are. Right after this, we have the typography options for the title. We can use these to change the font family for the title, in which case it won't be the same one used for the H tag. You can pick any one of these from the list to replace the default font. For example, if we pick Arial, we can see the change in the pricing list immediately and the new font is now listed in our options. I'll restore mine to default. Following that, we have the option to adjust the text size. Simply type in a new value, which is set to be in pixels by default. I'll erase this to restore the default size. Then we have the weight. If you set 900 here, it's the same as setting bold. You can use a smaller value for your title text or go back to the default. Then the text transform option, which lets us turn our title text all uppercase or all lowercase capitalize each word, or use normal to show your text exactly as you entered it, whatever suits your site design. We can also change the style of our title. Default and normal are the same as you can see. And we can switch to italic or oblique. The difference between these two isn't very apparent, but it comes down to which font you decide to use as each font designer created their product with either italic or oblique style in mind. And the decoration involves effects like underline, overline, line through, and none, which is our default. Then we can adjust the line height if we have a lot of content that we want to spread out a bit. Just set the value in pixels or m's, like this. So with this option we'd get more space both below and above our text. Our last option is for letter spacing, which, let me show you, can draw our letters apart or closer depending on what we set. And that's it for our title typography options. Let's see what else we have in style. There's the description color. So that's the text underneath our item title. I'll change it a bit. Alright. Then we have the typography options for our description text. These are identical to the ones we look through for our title, so anything font related can be changed here. That includes size, weight, decoration, and all the options we've seen before. The next set of options is for the price style. Here we can change the price color. I'm going to make mine match the title. Just a sec. OK. Next, we have the typography options for the price. 
Since we already know which settings we have here, I'll just quickly change the font size so it's 20 pixels. And I'll change the font weight to 500 so it's a bit thicker than normal. That's it for me. Then we have the price background color. Let me show you. You can set the color here to make the price more noticeable. Then if you have that color, you can also use the following options. The price padding. Click here to reset and de-link the default values so we can enter our own. Then you can start adjusting the padding values or you can click here again, but this time you will be linking the values together. So you can enter one value and it will be transferred to all the other fields because they're linked. And now my price has a padding of 5 pixels all around it. Another option you can use if you have a price background color is the price border radius. This will let you curve the angles of the square created by the background color. So you might turn it into a circle if you set 20 pixels in all fields. However, if I reset the color so we don't have a background, the padding and radius values will remain. So if you change your mind about using a background color, you should erase these as well. And that's it for the price style. Now let's see what we have in the section for content style. The first option, line color, refers to this line here. And you can change its color using the color picker. I'll change the hex code for mine so it matches the title and the price. Then we can change the line type. Other than the solid, which we have by default, there's also the dash type. Then there's the dotted type. And finally, the pattern type. This last one lets you insert an image that would serve as the line. An example of that is, let me show you, this here. This zigzag line is actually an image. So if you have an image you'd like to use, you can upload it via this field. For now, I'll restore the original setting. We can change the thickness of our line here. If I set 3 pixels, the line gets noticeably thicker. If I erase this, it goes back to the default 1 pixel width. Then we have the line margins. We can change the ones on the right and the left. If I set, say, 10 pixels here, the change isn't very noticeable, but if I make that 20, we can see there's a bigger gap between the line and the content around it. So you can use this option to increase or decrease the space around the line if you need to. And you can use the description margin top option to add or reduce the space between the description and the title above it. I'll set 5 pixels, which will bring the two closer. So this option affects the space here. OK. And then, in case you inserted an image after your title, you can adjust its margins here. After this, we have the general style settings. Here we have the item spacing option. This lets us set the space between the items in the pricing list. I think a bit less space might be nice, so let's set 30 pixels. There it is. Following that, we can enable an item separator. If you set this to yes, you'll get a set of options that will allow you to customize the separator. I won't be using it now. And then we have the button top margin. I want to separate the button a bit from the rest of the price list to create more space here. To do that, I'll set 60 pixels. OK. Then we have the button style settings. Some of these options should be familiar by now, for example, the typography. I'll quickly change the font size, 16 pixels ought to do it. All right. And I'll change the weight to 500 so it's a bit thicker than normal. After that, toggling between these switches reveals the color options for either the button when it's displayed normally or when it's hovered over. I'll leave the hover settings as they are, especially because they include this arrow animation. But I'd like to change the normal button display. More specifically, I'll switch the button text color to white by adding 6 Fs. And I'll change the button background color to the same almost black one I used for the descriptions. In case you opt to use a border, you can switch its color here. And you can change its width here. Then adjust its radius here. We can see there's already a small radius softening the corners. I want to remove it, and I'll do it by clicking here on this chain icon to reset the default values. OK, now my button is a proper rectangle. 
and we can change its padding. So that's the padding around the button content itself. Let me show you what it looks like without the default padding. The button looks much smaller without it. So I'm going to give it a few pixels to make it look nicer. As you can see, the fields for entry go clockwise from the top. And that's it for the button style options. The next section contains the options for the button icon style. I'll start by making the icon size match my button text size, which is 16 pixels. Then the icon color, since it already matches the text color, I'll leave it be. Following that, we have the icon margin settings, where I want to add more space between my icon and the button text. So 10 pixels for the right margin ought to do it. Okay, then if we switch on to the hover settings, we have the move icon option. This lets us pick how the icon animation will move. The default setting is horizontal, and it looks like this. The vertical will look like this. Horizontal short would get us this. That's quite neat, I'll keep it. And the last option we have in this drop down is none, which would mean the icon is left without any kind of animation. After this, the button inner border style settings are essentially empty as we don't currently have an inner border that we can style. And the same applies to the button underline style settings. And that's all of the options covered and my first column done. Since I want to have a pricing list in three columns, I'm going to take advantage of my finished column and duplicate it. Then drag it over to the next column. Doing this saves me from having to make the same spacing adjustments I made here all over again. I'll skip ahead now as I don't want to waste your time by showing you the same process again while I customize the other columns. Okay, here we are. I'm about to finish my third column, but there's something I wanted to show you first. More specifically, how to add these small images to your pricing list items. Click here to choose an image. Select the one you want and insert. Then we'll need a title. Now we have a title with an image after it. And you can use these images to fully customize your pricing list and reflect any allergens in your menu or specifics related to regional cuisines, or simply add images if you're covering other industries and niches. Regarding the rest of this item, we have all the regular options we've tackled earlier in the video. So we need to add a description for it. Just a sec so I can type it in. Then we set a price for it. And while we're here, let's give it a discount. Finally, I'll change the price color so it matches the one I used for the other discount price in this column. OK, and now my standard layout pricing list is done. So before we part, I'd like us to take a quick look at an example of an image before type of pricing list. The example I'll show you will have two columns. Start by opening the element selection and searching for the appropriate widget from the list. Then drag it over. And here under layout, you need to change the type to image before. We can immediately see on the template how the look differs. However, the options when we look at them are the same. I'll start by choosing a new image. OK, insert. And then I can proceed the same way as before, just as I did with my standard list. Since you've seen how those work, I trust I can skip ahead and show you the result. Here we are. I now have a very nice looking menu for a coffee house or a bistro. Hopefully this video has helped you to see how easy making pricing lists can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its pricing list widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thank you for watching!